we we continue the teachings about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And last Sunday we started with the title Who is the Holy Spirit? We still continue with us, so this is part two. But the Holy Spirit shows himself to us who he is. So we have both the theory and the practicals. So I thought today it was going to be we do the teachings and then the Holy Spirit will show us some of the practicals concerning who he is. But we see here today that when he's in charge, he's in charge, if you let him. And he's already shown us to some extent who he is, what he does. So we know that as you minister to the Lord, he speaks. We know that the Holy Spirit is the conduit of revelation concerning the things of the Spirit. Um, we know that the Holy Spirit is the one that is here with us. Jesus said, I am going, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will stay with you. He will show you all things. He will teach you all things. And he will not speak of himself. Just like Jesus was not speaking of himself. He, was, he says and what he hears the Father say. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is one with Jesus with the Father. And he speaks to us. So we continue on who is the Holy Spirit. In the limited time that we have, let's have a look at First Corinthians chapter, sorry, Acts, Acts chapter 13. I keep mentioning First Corinthians, maybe there's something I need to put it in there. For Acts 13, go oh, I know what it is. It's First Corinthians 14 about the Holy Spirit. But for now, Acts chapter 13. Now in the church there was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaim, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and so, as they ministered to the Lord, something happened. In fact, in this case, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So the month of June is the month that has been declared as a month of fasting, so get ready. Uh, but as the minister to the Lord and pastor, the Holy Spirit said, so the Holy Spirit speaks when you minister to the Lord, and when you accompany it with fasting. So he said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So until that moment, the word called there is past tense. So God had already called them, but it was not yet made known until this moment. And that moment, what triggered it? The trigger was they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So as you minister to the Lord and as you accompany it with fasting, that which God ordains, you open up yourself to it. Do you understand? You open up yourself to it. And then he says, Now separate to me Barnabas and so for the work to which I have called them. So you are not on earth by accident. You are not on earth just to go through the motions of being born. And then you are a baby and whenever you are uncomfortable, you cry. And then your mom and if your father is uh, also an active one, we try to decipher which one is it this time. Is it hunger? Is it too cold? Is it too hot? Does the nappy needs changing? Or do they just want somebody to cool over them and go, 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 go. Then they have to try and work that out. And then as a baby, you are laid about. And then you grow up into a teenager. And then your parents' prayer increase. <laughs> and then you become a young adult, and so on. And you also, you get married, you have children. Your children have children, you see them. Your grandchildren have children. By that time, you are probably knocking on transition, but you see your great-grandchildren as well. And then you go, or oh, is that it? 
is that what life is all about. And then, oh, of course, you work. First you go to school, <laughs> and you do the exams, and then you work. And then you work some more, and you make money, and you make some more money. If, no, no, if you did not exist, what would you have missed? So, God has a plan, and he has a purpose. As you minister to the Lord, he reveals it. We are ambassadors. That's what the Bible said. So an ambassador comes from another country and he comes to the country to which he has been sent. So we have been sent to this place called Earth. Or we have been sent with a brief, with an assignment. As you minister to the Lord, especially with fasting, it becomes known. Some of it will not necessarily be in a spectacular way, where you hear a voice and the prophetic voice comes, boom, boom, boom. The majority of it will come as you sit down and you read the Bible. And you just develop the relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. And one of the best ways to develop a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit is to develop a good relationship with your Bible. Is somebody here at the get to Get to love the Word of God. Get to know the Bible. Get to read the Bible. Get to study the Bible. Get to memorize scriptures. Because it's out of the abundance of what you have put in your spirit that you give, so to say, spiritual food for the Holy Spirit to walk. Is somebody getting a blessing? For example, Jesus said that he will bring to your remembrance all things. Ah, if those things were not there, how can you remember them? Eh? You have to be there first. Then the Holy Spirit can remind you. If a spiritual attack were to happen, for example, you can't say to the devil, just hold on, just give me a minute, right? And then you rush to your Bible to find the right word. Are you still there? Oh, I've got it now. So he says here, oh, oh, let me get the scripture right. It's too late. If you faint in the days of adversity, your strength was little. But you don't wait till the days of adversity. You build yourself up. Jude 20, on your most holy place. Holy faith. Praying in the Spirit. So the other way by which you develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit is praying in the Spirit. But here, as they minister to the Lord, so they were habitually ministering to the Lord. It wasn't a one-off. So just as they normally do. So on this particular occasion, the Holy Spirit spoke. Now, separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then you know what they did after? Look at verse 3. Then, having fasted. So, they were already ministering to the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit spoke. What did they do next? They fasted again. And then, having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them before they sent them away. Question. Who in these three verses was it that spoke? Holy the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit still speaks. He still speaks. When is the assignment that the Holy Spirit said concerning them? Now. He said, now, separate to me. He didn't say later. He said, now. So the question, who, is answered. The question when is answered. The question how, how, what was the situation? How did the ministration of the Holy Spirit, the interjection of the Holy Spirit in the administration, the voice of the Holy Spirit coming, what was this, what was the setting? How did it come about? What were they doing? They were ministering to the Lord. They were fasting, they were worshiping, they were praying. And then we come to the question, what? What was it that the Holy Spirit said? He said, separate to me 
Barnabas and Saul. Now, there were more than Barnabas and Saul then. In fact, we are told in verse 1 that there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was Cornelia, Lucius, and Cyrene, Managene, who was brought up in Terror, the Tetrarch, and so on. So, at least those other people were there as well. There might have been more because it says in the church that was in Antioch. So, these ones were the prophets and teachers. So, there were other people who were not necessarily called to the office of the prophet or teacher that were there. And the point is, the Holy Spirit can be pretty specific. Now, the fact that he did not mention the assignment for the other people does not mean that they have been bypassed. God has a timing to the assignments that he gives us, number one. Number two, he gives us different assignments and different callings. And when he called out Paul and Barnabas, the rest were not going, uh, did I not fast like they did? Did I not fast as much? There was no competition. In fact, if anything, they were united in the spirit. Because what the rest now did was to not even pray for Paul and Barnabas to send them forth with prayer. One of the reasons why we're pushing for you to understand what the Holy Spirit is, is so that what God wants to do in your life can be fully revealed. Can be fully revealed. Romans chapter 8. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. In the next few minutes, we're going to put a look at Romans chapter 8. Question. How many people remembered the assignment? Please raise your hand if you remember the assignment. The Holy Spirit is here. Okay. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, let me tell you which assignment this time. There were two assignments. There is the one about reading the book of Acts. How many chapters are in the book of Acts? Okay. Hey, I like that. How many people in the last two weeks? Two weeks ago. Has read it at least once over, including listening on audio. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Sorry, I didn't read it. Okay, somebody said they have read it, but they haven't finished it. So let's go halfway. Uh, how many people have read at least 14 of the chapters? Ah, I'm not going to go more than halfway. <laughs> Let's, let's press in. I know we have busy lives and all of that. But we've got to make our time for God. And I'm sure you are reading your Bible normally, you are reading other books, of the, of the Bible, and having your private study. And so I get that. But let, let's work together in this area. Because I genuinely believe that as we press in over the next few weeks, we're going to see more of the manifestations of the presence of God and the power of God. So I really employ you. So for those who have read it once over, well done. Read it again once over. Read it again once over. Question. For those who have read it, even up to halfway, what are some of the things about the Holy Spirit that jumps out from the book of Acts? Now, the Acts chapter 1. Let me go to Acts chapter 1. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. I hope we'll still be able to get to Romans 8 today. Acts chapter 1. says, verse 1, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, did you see that, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, it was even by the Holy Spirit, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, who is the person that is acknowledged to have written the book of Acts? Anyone? Luke. Luke. So here, Luke also wrote the book of Hey, that's awesome. He's saying the former account, so he's referring to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke that I wrote to you, which 
concerned all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Jesus began it then. He has not finished it. Amen. He is still Amen. doing it. Amen. So although the book of Acts is titled The Acts of the Apostles, you are, it would be all right in my mind to also call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because it shows us what the Holy Spirit does, did in the early church and still does in the church today. And is doing in and through us, people now. And as you study the book of Acts, I want you to put yourself there as the subject to whom it is written and who is being shown all the powers the responsibilities, the grace, the unction that God has given you now to function in your generation as a child of God and as God's ambassador and agent. And to those who would open up by faith that way, to them will God use to manifest His grace and His power. God is not partial. There are those that are busy, genuinely busy, and they can tell you the reasons why they are just busy. Busy with work, busy with husband, busy with wife, busy with children, sometimes even busy with ministry, to the point where they don't have enough time to press it on a one-on-one -on -one basis in worship, in fasting, in praying. Not to even talk about the corporate work that we do together. And the devil is happy to make people busy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, the devil loves busy Christians. Because he can get them so busy that they forget the basic things that they are supposed to do, which is the source of power. So the book of Acts tell us a lot about the acts of the Holy Spirit that he wants to continue to do in and through you and me. It will take two or three. So for those who have read it, either through this time or from your previous reading, what are one or two main things that you see the Holy Spirit do as you read the book of Acts? Don't give me general scriptures in the book of Acts. <laughs> Anyone? Yes, sir. He instructs, he gives instructions. Okay? Anyone else? Yes. He warns you of impending danger. Danger, rather. Okay? Prophecies. Prophecies. So through the Holy Spirit, prophecies are given. Yes, ma'am. It changes the way we speak and we hear. So, I know I didn't tell you to give me what chapter and what verse. <laughs> but one example that comes to mind, and I don't know which particular one you have in mind, is I think in the book of Acts chapter 4, where they gathered together in a place and they were afraid. Yes. But they prayed. And the Holy Spirit, they were, they were baptized afresh in the Holy Spirit and they spoke with boldness. So those who were very afraid and very, uh, you know, shy, became incredibly confident and bold. It changes the way we speak. Yes, ma'am. And gives us efficiency. Mm. Efficiency, might, and ability. Acts chapter one verse eight. So as you go through the book of Acts, personalize it. What is this saying to you? What is it revealing to you about who you really are? The resources that are available to you, the powers that you have. It's time to take those powers back. I say it's time to take those powers back. As a Christian, you are incredibly powerful. But if the enemy is able to convince you 
that you are not, then you are not able to exercise those powers. Powerful. Incredibly powerful. Let's spend some time for now in Romans chapter 8. Turn to Romans chapter 8. In the book of Romans chapter 8, now the second assignment which I was coming to was that, does anybody remember this Romans chapter 8? What were we meant to do? To memorize the verses about the Holy Spirit. So it, it, it was said. Aha. Aha. Okay, you've heard it now. It's not too late. Romans chapter 8. So between this today and next Sunday, Romans chapter 8, I think it has how many verses? 31, maybe? 29. 39. Okay. So read all 39 verses. Look at all these places where the Holy Spirit, it will be, or sometimes it will just say Spirit, but it will be Spirit in capital S. Where it says Spirit in small letter S, that's talking about our human spirit. So where it refers to the Holy Spirit, or Spirit, capital S, I counted, and I think there are 17 references to the Holy Spirit. Alright, I've been just in that one chapter. And I want you to memorize how many did we say? Not all, but um, memorize five, just five. Five verses that talk about the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8. So memorize it and then understand, obviously, what he says about the Holy Spirit and what that means for you. How many people will do this? How many people will not do this? <laughs> Mind our pastor. Okay, now I am reminding you. <laughs> but let's look at some of it. So, the first thing that we see there is that the Holy Spirit influences our behavior and character. Influences our behavior and character. The word that is used there is walk. So look at verse, verse 4. Romans 8, verse 4. Uh, okay, back up to verse 3. For what the Lord could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So Christians are to walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. When you are born again, you still have a choice. You can walk according to the flesh, or you can walk according to the spirit. It's your choice. But the power to walk according to the spirit is now given. Do you understand that? So you choose, it's a choice. You choose to walk according to the Spirit. Those who are led by their feelings have chosen to walk according to the flesh. You choose to walk according to the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit changes us from the inside out if we allow Him. Number two, freedom. The Holy Spirit gives us true freedom. Verse 2 tells us, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Because that's why sin no longer has dominion over us. We're free from sin. We're free from the power and dominion of sin. <coughs> dominion means to dominate. Sin no longer dominates the Christian unless we allow it. And unless we choose to. Number three. The Holy Spirit helps our mindset. Everybody say mindset. Yes. Look at verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds. Did you see that phrase? Set their, you can choose what you set your mind to do. But here, again, he's saying set your mind on the things of the Spirit. 
which also means I can choose to set my mind on the things of the flesh. I can choose. I have that liberty. But he advises us, set your mind on the things of the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, set their mind on the things of the spirit. The things Set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit and the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because of time, we're going to stop there today. But the mindset one, so we just look at points numbers one, two, three, and we'll continue from there next time. But mind the things of the spirit. Mind the things of the spirit. Think on the things of the Spirit. Have the mind of Christ. Be changed. Choose to allow yourself to be changed by the Holy Spirit. We'll continue from the next time. Amen.